this week are we going to continue that trend or are we going to reverse because there's still a lot of fear going on right now especially i just got done saying there's a lot of geopolitical stuff now coming out and macro stuff again that we need to worry about but right now bitcoin is still holding strong 21 2 right you can see up one percent today all coins are still being bought as well all coins are in the green so overall btc dominance is still pretty low has not climbed up despite all the fear but what's going on this today and what's going on this week well as for geopolitical stuff russia has for the first time defaulted on their loan payment for like i don't know 100 years something like that it was like 1914 or 19 something like that uh, of course, Russia and Putin blames that the West is making sure that they don't pay their their uh, their payment. But uh, this is the first time in a very, very long time that this has happened. So obviously, this is not, not something that Putin likes. Um, and also, what, what he's not going to like is the fact that the G7, including the U.S., is getting together to ban... Uh, Russian gold so part of the sanctions the growing sanctions so they will ban imports of Russian gold and Russian gold is like the second they're the second producer of uh, the second exporters of gold so that's gonna be quite a lot and what else is interesting about this is in addition to that they were already talking about banning Russian oil so they according to this they will set how much they will buy from Russia in terms of oil. They're not cutting it off completely, but they're going to decrease substantially. But what's really interesting about this is, uh, what about China? Because we know China is an ally of Russia. They can't publicly state that they're really supporting Russia, but they, they are. But to make sure that China stays out of the way, so the G7 is also going to pledge $600 billion in private and public funds over five years to finance infrastructure in developing countries such as China as it uh, pursues its Belt and Road Initiative. So basically, what the G7 and the United States are doing is, mark a bell, is giving China a whole lot of money and saying, stay out. <laughs> that's basically what they're doing. Uh, I think that's, that's, uh, that's quite funny. Um, and it's probably going to work because China's like, well, we're getting $600 billion free for basically staying on the sidelines, which is what they're, they should be doing anyways. But yeah, there's, there's, there's still a lot of stuff going on in Europe right now. And it's, uh, you know, the, the, the war continues and it's not a good thing, but right now it does seem like the G7 is ramping up their sanctions so how is Moscow and Putin go react? Unknown at this point. Unknown at this point. But just want to bring those up today. Now, as for macro stuff, well, we know inflation is still a big deal. It has not gone away after, you know, after all these rate hikes. Um, and, and we still have more economic data coming out, right? So this Thursday, we're going to have... Uh, I, I got the wrong one here. Uh, Thursday, we're going to have... Oh, come on. Okay, I got to, I got to refresh this. Uh, where, did it, where did it go? It disappeared. Where did it go? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, I scrolled down. I scrolled down way too far. Uh, thurs, this Thursday, we're going to have more inflation news or inflation data. So this time it's going to be core inflation. So we got headline inflation, which is different. And then, uh, you know, we have the CPI number, which includes energy and food. Core inflation takes those out. But ultimately, we're going to get some inflation numbers. Uh, is inflation going to go down? Is it going to go up? Right? Last month, or actually, I think it's still this month, CPI data came out and it was higher than expected. It actually reversed course. We started at 8.6%, then went to 8.3%, and then we went back up to 86 The core inflation is a little bit lower, so are we going to go down or are we going to follow CPI and go up, right? So this could have major implications um, later this week after Thursday and Friday and going forward. Now, 
It could be. We could see markets also do a nothing burger because traders and Wall Street and everyone else is just used to the fact that, well, okay, we're just going to have higher inflation and, and higher rates, right? That could be a possibility, which is why we, we rallied pretty hard last week, and we'll see what happens this week. So there, there's a chance of that, but probably not. And you still have, besides Powell, you have St. Louis Fed President James Bullard, who continues to be super, 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 super hawkish. And it looks like he wants to take over Powell's job and basically says, ah, we need to just keep increasing rates and keep front loading it and just raise it to hell, basically, to stop inflation. So you still have a lot of people within the FOMC uh, board that really, really wants rate hikes to go up and way up. So... I guess we'll see. We'll see what happens. So, but obviously, that's also coming this week. So, uh, be prepared for that. Now, getting back to getting back to some crypto stuff. Goldman Sachs decides to cut Coinbase. They they uh, downgraded Coinbase from neutral to sell. Right. So Goldman Sachs right now not a fan of Coinbase. Now Goldman Sachs is reported reportedly trying to come up with $2 billion to buy Celsius assets, which I'll cover in a little bit. But Goldman Sachs right now, uh, they decided to cut Coinbase, and I think they cut a few other crypto projects. Basically, they don't like what's going on between their, uh, their 18% um, labor force cut or salary cut um, and also what's going on with crypto overall and of course competitive pressures like now Binance offering uh, zero fee Bitcoin trading that's go cut into Coinbase right so a lot of reasons why they're putting a sell rating on Coinbase right now and that's um, that's not a good thing it's not a good thing 